Okay. Roseanne, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I feel like I haven't seen you in such a long time ever since COVID happened and even a little before that. So thank you for taking time to do this. Glad to be here, Benny. You're doing a wonderful job connecting with people. So happy to have this conversation with you. I appreciate you saying that. So um, I wanted to reach out to you because um, I wanted you being a senior partner for Baker Tilly um, and handling the employee benefits audits. I just wanted to talk to you about your perspective and how your world has changed since COVID happened. So, you know, as you mentioned, Benny, I run the uh, employee benefit plan audit practice um, for Chicago, uh, for Baker Tilly. And my primary job really is, you know, compliance audits for retirement plans, right? So this is the time we usually rev up and start doing all of the audits and work with our clients. And what, what we're finding, and I'm sure it's you know, pretty similar to other services that right now everybody's minds is on their organizational, um, I guess, uh, you know, or the organizational focus is on being liquid, being able to run their organizations well, kind of withstanding all of what's been thrown at them. So I find myself thinking more, not about how do I get my you know, employee benefit plan audits done for the clients rather than like, what can I do to sort of ease some of their anxiety and help them run their businesses? And so that's, that's always been the way I've approached my role with clients. But I think now more so than ever, um, I think having that focus of how can I help and be a resource for you is, is, has become really important. And I, I see that a lot, right? And a lot, a lot of people are doing that. How can I help? Um, is, but specifically with you, what are you doing to help? So I think the, the first thing that um, I've done is to just call people and create a space for open conversation. Um, that's a hard thing to do, right? Usually you're calling about certain aspects and things, but now I just find myself just calling clients and prospects and just saying, hey, how are you doing? How can I help? Let's just talk, um, spitball, just anything. And, and kind of being a person on the other side, you know, willing to listen and letting them know that, um, I have this huge network, right? Both within Baker Tilly and outside of resources that I can contact for them and connect them to, to kind of create you know, uh, solutions for them. So what we call that in Baker Tilly is, is being a value architect, uh, which I think is an awesome term because that really is what businesses or you know, folks are looking for right now is help me with my problems. And how can you be that connector to, to get the information that I need to make, you know, good relevant decisions right now. And, and that's my role. And that's what I see myself as. So when I call my clients and prospects, that's what I'm trying to tell them, listen, I may not have their answer right now, but I can tell you that I have a lot of people that I network with and my organization is large and have, has a lot of depth of information. We can help you do this. Okay. Is there anything, um, is there a commonality between what people ask how for now? Um, it's a little bit of everything. I find myself having a lot of conversations about e-learning and family and, you know, how do you keep your routine and all of that. Um, but also just uh, about business, businesses, right? Like, what are you hearing from other people? Um, you know, what are some of the strategies they're, they're using? Um, how are they applying for PPP? I mean, what are some of, you know, just basically getting a pulse. I think everybody wants to know and have reassurance that they're doing the right things by their organizations and their, their people and they like to get a pulse. So I'm kind of the person that's either giving them reassurance or just giving them my perspective and perspectives that I've um, come across from my conversations with my network. Okay, well, let's talk about your perspective. Um, in this new norm that we're in right now, what's, uh, what are, what's the advice that you're giving to other leaders internally at Baker Tilly, your clients, um, people in your network? Like, what are you telling them? I mean, I'm not going to say I'm one of those, you know, um, gurus on self-help and all that, but I just, I give people my perspective and I tell them what I'm doing to keep calm in all of this. Um, and one of the things that I found helpful for me um, is really keeping my perspective and, and on the bigger picture and, and really looking or trying not to get drawn down by all the negativity. Um, it's easy to turn on the news and like binge watch all the news and just get pulled into things that I think that are out of your control and feel helpless. And so, you know, I'm trying my level best to not do that and, and keep perspective and, you know, really think about what's important to me. And right now, you know, if I take stock of all the things that I have, I have, you know, healthy family, 
we have roof over our head, I have a job, and you know, I can focus my energy on good rather than you know, getting out of control, thinking about all the negative things that are happening around me that I can't affect. So you know, it's about resetting myself when I feel like I'm going down this negative spiral to say, hey, listen, take a step back. You have a lot of positive things going on and don't, don't get pulled into the negativity. So how do you reset yourself? Because I think everyone goes into that <laughs> hole. I see myself doing that, right? But I think everyone has different things that they do. And, uh, but I do think that a lot of people, it just takes some, they don't get out of it or um, they just have a really, they take a longer time to get out of it. So what does uh, Roseanne Abraham do to get out of that? <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that I have let myself do is just um, be okay with how I'm processing this whole situation. So whether it was the first week where, you know, I had to do e-learning with my kids, I was just beyond myself because I wanted everything structured. I wanted to make sure they were ready. And I, it was really stressing me out. And I kind of gave myself permission after that to say, you know what, this is new for everybody. This is new for me. Some of these things I can't control, but what I can control is how I react to it. And so giving myself the opportunity to be less than perfect in how I deal with these things and kind of shifting my mindset to say, you know, this is, this is something absolutely new. There's no perfect way of handling it. I think keeping calm and trying to have realistic expectations of how you can deal with this kind of helps you when you don't achieve, you know, whatever mental target you've set for yourself on how you're going to deal with this problem. And it's also helped to talk to other people, surprisingly, like just sharing your common struggles um, to know that you're not, you know, you're not in this alone. Everybody is facing it this way. You know, there's, there's, everybody has, everybody's facing this, right? Um, and then kind of going back to, well, I think what I would say is, has always been sort of a fundamental principle of mine, which is, you know, start where you are with what you have and do what you can. You know, if you kind of start there, it, it helps, I think, to refocus yourself because then, you, you know, you don't try to find solutions for larger problems that you can't solve yourself, but you start in places where you can. Can you repeat that again? Start where you are with what, with you, what have. you have and do what you can. Love it. I yeah, love it. I believe it's Arthur Ashe who quoted that, but I just, I love that book because it just, it makes it so much more doable, right? All it takes is you and what you have and starting where you are. Well, I don't know who Arthur Ashe is, but I'm going to give you the credit for that, uh, for that quote. So <laughs> thanks. Uh, I really appreciate your time, Roseanne. And um, I'm glad that you and your family are healthy and safe and well. So thank you. Thanks, Benny.